Welcome to this DaVinci Resolve Fusion node breakdown. Today's node is the chromatic adaptation node. So we're going to jump into Fusion. We've got some B-RAW footage in here. And for this one, I kind of want to see some uh, display LUTs going on. So I'm going to turn my LUTs on both of these. The chromatic adaptation node allows you to transform your images uh, lighting from kind of one Kelvin to another and not just change footage. This is also useful. Uh, this node is useful when say you've got monitors that have some weird tint going on. You can also use this to actually retint the footage. So it's kind of correct. But primarily I, I use this as a subtle node just to change my uh, color temperatures of my footage. Knowing the color temperature that you were shot in is kind of helpful. So if we actually go to the, the color page, we can see right here with this footage, I shot at a 5600 with zero tent and zero exposure. So I know exactly what uh, color temperature I shot this footage in. So if we jump back into Fusion and we add a chromatic adaptation node, it will stick it in there. Also, another thing to note on this node, you kind of want it at the end of your uh, your chain. So anything you're doing in here, you want to make sure this is affecting everything. Because if you put it up front and then change some of your stuff, it, it might give you some weird results. So you want this kind of at the end of your chain here. So what this node is doing, it's offering you multiple methods of doing math. So cat02 is the default method, which is fine. And all these methods that are listed, they, they kind of have their own little quirks. And uh, they'll all kind of change coloring a little bit if you have something super, super uh, saturated. Like say your blues are super saturated, it might change it purple. So be careful what you're doing if you have super saturated images. Now, as far as methods go, I usually use Bradford Linear or Von Kreis because this is available in pretty much any software I use, these two methods of, of, of math. And personally, one isn't better than the other one. I just often use this one because, again, like I said, it's, it's available in other things I do in other programs. So I like to keep stuff standard. So down here you have your source illuminant and your standard is your standard illuminant. You can change anything. You can change your f-stops if you want. You can change it even though they're not f-stops. They have specific values to them. You can use your uh, xy chromacity, change your xy. But we're going to leave this on color temperature because uh, we're going to uh, change our color temperatures here. So coming in, our source illuminant right here, we know was 5600. And we had zero tin applied to it. And before I go any further, actually, I'm going to change my color, current color space in gamma. It's reflecting Rec 709 and linear. It's supposed to go off of... Uh, kind of your footage or actually your timeline. So it's thinking it's that. I'm gonna change this to DaVinci Wide Gamut and DaVinci Intermediate because that's what my footage is. So say I wanted it to warm this up a little bit, you know? I didn't want to shoot 5600 on, on set and I say wanted to warm it up a little bit. So I could go to color temperature down here, change this to 3200 and it warms up my footage. And just know uh, doing extremes will uh, have some, some odd results sometimes, like I said, for heavily saturated areas. So just, uh, just be careful what you're doing. Have fun playing with it, and I will see you in the next Node Breakdown.